Well, hi, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Living United with Nashua Business. You know, the premise for this show is talking with local businesses from the greater Nashua community about, you know, about what they do, a little bit under looking underneath the hood. And today you're going to understand why that term is particularly poignant. But we'd like to talk with businesses about their history, uh, you know, what sort of customers they work with, and, and also in particular how they're getting involved in the community. Um, I always like to get to that. What's the business proposition for giving back? So everybody you see on the show is going to be a business that's heavily involved also in giving back to the community. I'm super excited to have with me today two of my friends who I've known for a very long time, our friends from Merrimack Auto Center, yeah. Chad Tangway and Brooke Griffin, third generation owners of Merrimack Auto Center. Um, so welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Now, um, let's just start out with a little bit of the history, if you don't mind. Merrimack Auto Center is uh, was started by your dad. Is that right, Chad? Started by my dad. Actually, it was a um, Philip 66 station in 1972 that he started. And in 1977, we became Merrimack Auto Center. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, where were you back then? So right on... Um, so right near, I'll give another business, S&J Motors. A lot of people know they've yeah. been in business for a long time, uh, right in Merrimack. Uh, there's a Dunkin' Donuts there now, conveniently. My dad actually loves Dunkin' Donuts, so it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's, kind, of, it's kind of funny that a Dunkin' Donuts moved in there. But uh, So we were there from 77 to 94, and then we moved to our current location uh, on 9 Web Drive. Okay, and Web Drive, I know I know where the location is. A little bit set back. Um, yes, it's just, it's the same thing. I usually, you know, if I'm giving directions for, for to people, I say you get off at exit 10, uh, Anheuser-Busch is directly in front of you, and you take a right and head toward Nashua. We're about a half mile up. Or if you go past the big one ice cream, we're about a mile past that on the left. So we're right yeah. on that Nashua-Merrimack line. Yeah. Uh, so, so right right, right there. So Web Drive, FW Web uh, used to be down there. So a lot of people know that too that have been in the area for yeah, a I always tell so. people it's up in the general vicinity of the Y. Yeah. It, yeah. Same thing. Absolutely. So, um, and so your dad started the business and... When, is he still actively involved in the business? He is yet? not. Nope, he's he's not. I mean, it's great. He was at my shop today. Uh, he he definitely comes in, and it's yeah, great. Is he's that? A, let's be honest. Is that really great? It's yeah. great. It, yeah. it, it's great because yeah. I can't tell you how many <laughs> okay. times a customer has been in the shop asking how how's your yeah. dad doing, and uh, and I'll be like, well, you're gonna find out in about two minutes. And my dad walks through the door, and he just sees you know a customer that had been going to him for for 20 years before, mm -hmm. yeah. and it 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 really is wonderful to to see, and it really it like brings my dad up to to know that customers are are still coming after I've owned the business for. 18 this is my 19th year owning the business yeah um so yeah so it's 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 always great um to have I, I love that yeah it was funny i was talking with uh, i don't know you probably know charlie hall oh yes so yes. charlie yep. and i were yep. talking about his dad phil yes. who of course it was started by his granddad but yep. phil phil was the owner for many years and when he retired um he, he had a really hard time retiring I was talking with Charlie, and he's like, yeah. "My dad, he's at the office every single day. He's yeah. nobody knows what he does, but right, he just, just hangs out, can't go out. away." Right. So my dad, when he re when he retired, um, yeah. he ended up. I actually opened up my Nashua facility in 2012. Yep. As we were probably going to get to that point. So when I opened that up, I went to Nashua. Yeah. Um, and I called my dad and said, "Hey, how would you like to come back and run the Merrimack shop for yeah. a couple of years while while I?" You know, get the Nashua store up and up and running, and he was like, "Absolutely!" And yeah. he came, and so we did bring him back in for for a couple That's of years, and it, and it was great. And then he's like, "I'm not doing these winters anymore," um, <laughs> and went to Florida. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, great. Yeah, that was fun. Well, I love the Nashua store. It's a five minute walk for me at United Way, so it's yep. super convenient. I can drop yep. off my car. You take care of it. Right. I walk back in the afternoon. Yeah. And that so. one's right off of Exit Seven, yeah. uh, just Seven East, right, right there. Mm -hmm. So very good, and. Um, so it's been a bunch of years, and if there's one end, well, there's there's of course been change in every industry over the mm -hmm. past couple of decades. Yeah. And uh, if I think of something like the automotive industry, it used to be I could pop the hood on my car and I actually kind of had a clue as to what was sure. there. You could sit inside of yeah. the engine compartment. <laughs> yeah. Like there's that much room when I when I started working on the car. I, mean, I even understood what some of the wires were right. for. Correct. Yes. You know, but not anymore. No. So what is, you know, so what is it that's, you know, driving the changes? What are some of the changes you've seen that are some of the most significant ones these days with automotive repair? 
I mean, it's not every day that somebody drive, walks in with a, a 30 year old car, right? Yeah, so. no, no, definitely the electronics. Oh. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you know, back in the, when I started, you know, we had, um, timing tools that we just look at. It was the timing light that you'd look and you'd just, you know, turn, turn the carburetor just a little bit. You could adjust it and everything would change. Now it's all done by computer. So we, mm -hmm. we hook into the, into the computer system of the car and we make changes, you know, that way. Yeah. Um, everything is electronic. Uh, you'll know that. You have sensors as you're going down the road. I mean, there's buttons you can push on your car mm -hmm. now that will follow the car in front of you. Um, it's it's crazy the amount of electronics right. that there are. So it's the amount of tools that we have to have um, that cost a lot of money um, to be able to yeah. communicate with these cars, see mm -hmm. what's going on. And, and they're it, probably all different between different and models and, all, and brands, I, I, right? Yes, yeah, so you have to get it. You have to get different um, components that that read different vehicles correct some mm -hmm. some of them are you know your chevys your fords your hondas those are all the same but when you start getting into anything um out there your bmws your audis those you know those are a little mm -hmm. bit different that yeah. you have to hook to interesting yeah. and brooke so you're you've been involved since you've been very little i imagine yeah i mean very little i started coming in and yeah. working for my dad just like cleaning the shop when i was a kid because i wanted to be there as much as i could and because he probably didn't have to pay you very much either <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, re I remember this <laughs> yeah. from my own daughter. Yeah. I mean, he had to, like, pay for me to, like, live. So he was pay <laughs> paying for me in a lot of other ways. Yeah. Her, um, her mom <laughs> made me pay her to well, live. Well, I will say with daughters, you never stop paying for it. You <laughs> might find a fair husband enough. and think you yeah. got it. Yeah. You're still going to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. But yeah. I started officially working there um, in 2012. Yeah. And then at that point, I was there coming in part time, working for the business, and I've now been full time at the shop for coming up on five years. Okay. So yeah. we spent a lot of time together over the years. And yes. figuring out a transition plan. I mean, I'm sure that you're now the general manager, right? I am. I'm so the general manager you've, now. You've, you're officially the also the person whose voice you hear when you call up. Yes. That I think is big. Much better to hear vo her voice than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we're kind of just taking it one step at a time right now and figuring yeah. out what's working yeah. working best for us. Okay. And it's definitely, a, it's a continued discussion for us. That's as fantastic. Always. As always. Well, I, you know, I, I, uh, I, I will feign a little, I will admit a little bit of jealousy because when we sold our business, before we sold our business, um, we, I had this conversation with my daughter and she's like, oh, no. Right. I'm out of here. Like that was not going to yeah. happen. So it's uh, it's really great that you guys are doing this yeah. together, and I think that's cool. I mean, we're we're anxious to see what's going to happen in the automotive automotive yeah. industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, with all the um, you know these EV mm -hmm. vehicles that are going out, you know, I don't I don't see gas engines going away, mm -hmm. but I could see that in twenty years that seventy. To eighty percent of the vehicles out there are EV, and mm -hmm. only twenty percent are gas. So I think yeah. we're going to see a huge change in the industry. I, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll we'll see. I mean, it, it's going to get really expensive. What today. about hydrogen? Ooh. You know, so is that is that kind of like the? Depends uh, who you ask. That's, <laughs> I was going to say. Depends who you ask. Is that the Back to the Future? <laughs> no, where they stuck? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm and I'm not talking about like the blimp, right? The yeah, Zeppelin yeah, right. that's going right. to blow up. But actually, I was talking with a guy in the automotive industry. Uh, a couple weeks ago, he owns a dealership, and okay. I asked him about hydrogen. He has a yeah. friend who actually owns a very large retrofitting business okay. mm -hmm. in the Midwest yeah. and retrofits vehicles yeah. to, to hydrogen fuel cells. Yeah. But it seems like a great idea, except you got to have an infrastructure to fuel these yeah. things. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, right now, I feel like it sounds like, from people that I've talked to, it sounds like the engineers are like, on board with it, mm. they think it's the way to go, and a lot of the the boots on the ground are not yeah. positive yet. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Oh, it's It'll be an interesting interesting curve. Yeah. But the vehicle itself, <laughs> cars are not going away. That definitely not. Yeah. Definitely oh, not. No. Okay. no, no. We'd be a lot healthier if they did, most likely, mm. and you know, because we'd be doing a lot more walking. But mm. definitely, they're not right. going anywhere. Yeah. And that's the one part of our business that is. You know, even through COVID and everything, every, you know, mm -hmm. one of the we were an essential business. You know, we have to still get the doctors 
to the hospitals, the nurses mm -hmm. to the hospitals, the yep. fire, you know, so we, we did, you know, definitely slow down. I mean, millions and millions of miles are not being driven yeah. mm -hmm. during, during COVID. So it definitely tapered down, but we were able to stay in business and stay running, mm -hmm. um, which- Yeah, keep which all of our employees, which was keep awesome. All, keep, we kept, yeah. matter of fact, we even hired through COVID. So uh, that's we, fantastic. we stayed on, so. Yep. Now, one of the things I know you guys do a lot of is working with fleets. Yeah. You know, yes. so mm -hmm. how would you, but a fleet is sort of a generic term. What would you describe to somebody who's listening, watching the show, maybe like, how would they know if they even have a fleet? What's a fleet? Yeah. So, I, uh, you know, a fleet it, to me, what we establish as a fleet is when you have a bunch of uh, company vehicles, I'll use like Amazon. Amazon has a fleet. The, the, the driver of the vehicle doesn't own the Amazon vehicle. Mm -hmm. So he owns his own vehicle, he drives in, gets into a vehicle mm -hmm. that is owned by Amazon and drives it. Um, business accounts are more so you own a company and you give out vehicles to your employees that they drive all the time. It's yep. their vehicle. So that's kind of like a business account. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other part of a business um, that we like to do is when, you know, someplace like a BAE, a Fidelity, an Anheuser-Busch, when we say we have business accounts, is we offer discounts to yeah. mm -hmm. said um, companies. And that would be a, a, another form of business. But fleet is more of, you know, somebody like Charlie. Um, they, you know, sure. they have... 50 vehicles, somebody mm -hmm. like JP Pest, they have a couple hundred vehicles. Mm -hmm. those, mm -hmm. those are fleets. Those, those are, you know, 50, 75, 100, 200 vehicle fleets, okay. um, which are excellent to, to get. So I know one of the things that we've talked about over the years, which I find particularly innovative is with your, not your fleet accounts, maybe a little bit, but with your normal business accounts where, yeah. say like a BAE, the employee will bring, they can bring their car to you, you yep. can shuttle them back to work, you yes. can pick them up later. Yes. You know, it just makes for such a convenience fact. Do you do that for both of your locations? Yes, well we have two, it, it's it's kind of weird, but we have two shuttle drivers in, in Merrimack, yeah. just because it's a little bit bigger facility and we have a lot more shuttling, but we do have a shuttle vehicle in Nashua mm -hmm. um, and the driver for there actually goes to Mexico for three months. So we do have nine months out of the year, a full a driver that's there all the time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the shuttle service is, is great. Mm -hmm. um, customers really take advantage of that. Cause you know, when you gotta bring your car somewhere and you're like, hey, Sarah, Joe, right. can you give me a ride? Can you pick me up at the show? Mm -hmm. You know, and people will do it for you, you know, but a lot of times it is a little bit of an inconvenience. Sure. So, so when they don't have to ask for that and they just bring the car in and say, mm -hmm. hey, I work at, again, I'll use BAE because they're right down yeah. the road from us or, or wherever. I work at United Way. And, you know, absolutely, do you need a ride to work? We give them a ride. We call them up when it's yeah. done. We go pick yeah. them Absolutely. up. So it's very convenient. Yeah, we have it on the other side too, where we have people that work third shift and they come in right off work, mm -hmm. come drop their car off, we drive them home, they go oh, sleep. That's a great and idea. And their car's done again yeah. by the yeah. time they're ready to go back to work again. Nice. Um, and right. so the shuttle is awesome for those people as mm -hmm. well yeah. because the times that they need rides, their family and friends are in work. Yeah. Right. So it yeah. kind of takes some stress off of them and right. allows that schedule to work. Right. Well, they're always trying to get me to use the shuttle when I drop things off at the, right. in Nashua. Right. I'm like, no, like the five minutes, <laughs> right. I'm not quite there yet. Right. My age, that I can't the walk do that. is good for me. It, it is. really <laughs> is. I it get is in my good. steps for that, you know, that one day. Yes. Of, right. So we do have the waiting room yeah. in Merrimack also. That, yeah. and, um, in Nashua, yeah. and, and in Nashua, the Merrimack one's a little bit bigger, a little bit more nice. to the side. Yeah. You know, it's off to the side where the Nashua one, unfortunately, I can only do what I can do in the space. And you got that dogs I, in Merrimack, and we have the dogs in Merrimack. Most days they weren't here there today, but most days, yes, we have either my two dogs or sometimes Brooke my will bring dog. in her dog. Oh, you bring um, your dog now too? I do. Yes. Yeah, he, he's either with me at the shop or goes to daycare because yeah, so. he's spoiled. And, <laughs> and it's fun when customers walk in and we're like, do you have an appointment? They're like, no, just saying hi to the dogs. They come in, they say hi to the dogs, and then they leave, and we're like. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. they're like, they'll, they'll bring them a treat. You know, well, we used to have we used yeah. to bring our dogs yeah. to the store right. too. We had people yeah. that came by yeah. just for yeah. the dogs. Also, I'm like, and are I'm you like, gonna buy something here? You know, no. no I'm like, I like dogs. I like coffee, yeah. donuts, yeah. something. You know, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. They're like, you're fine. You know, That's so true. it's all it's always nice. You know, pe yeah. people love. They, they just like that when they come yeah. in. There's just that that we really try to put out that atmosphere. Um, it's a family business. It, it's a family business, mm -hmm. and we want you to feel comfortable. You know, we really you know being a dad of two very 
strong, independent daughters, a wife who's very, you know, I want females to be able to walk in and mm -hmm. feel comfortable, never talk down to them, explain to them. Mm -hmm. I find that they ask the most questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I think that when it comes to men, they're like, you, if you try to explain something to them, they don't want to tell you that they don't understand because they're a guy, they should understand a car. That's not the case. I, I, that is not the case. 100% you know? agree with so you. So yeah. they won't ask questions or they're afraid to make the sound yeah. that their car is making where a female will come in and she'll make that screech sound and I'll be like, I know exactly what that is. Where mm -hmm. the guy just is like, oh, it's just a screech. And you're like, can you be a little more, <laughs> more descriptive? Yeah. So, yeah. so it is fun. So yeah. we, not that we necessarily cater to, to, to females, but we do... I do like having them come in because I you feel have like a lot of experience teaching, uh, uh, like mm -hmm. talking to them, daughters. making them making right. them feel comfortable. You right. know yeah. that that you know, and explaining to them what's going yeah, on. Yeah, it's interesting the whole culture around cars, and it is mm -hmm. there is this tendency for it to be like a man dominated thing. But mm -hmm. but in the typical family, I mean, I know about, know about your family, in my yeah. family, I make very few of the decisions. So yeah. it's really right. important that the females <laughs> in my life are comfortable with the decisions that get made. Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So. so Brooke, I wanted to ask you about um, community. Yeah. You guys have been just great community partners with us at United Way. Thank you. you know, you support our days of caring, you support our baby shower, you, you know, you come as volunteers to some of our events. Um, but you do other things as well in the community. I'm sure. Maybe you want to share a little bit about what are you guys passionate yeah. about, you know, in in Nashua about making this place better. Yeah, absolutely. Um so I think the like the really the biggest like immediate community thing that we do is we do try to do a lot with the schools. Um, mm -hmm. My my sister's a teacher. My mom is a teacher. Um, education has always been very important yeah. to our family. Um, so it's constant that we're trying to just give back to the schools, donate to the different athletic programs. Mm -hmm. We're a big sports family. Um, so doing anything we can like I. I graduated from high school, didn't have a need for catcher's gear anymore. So yeah. give it to the school. Like get it into the national community, let mm -hmm. those kids have that equipment so that they can continue to be a part of a sport that I yeah. loved. Yeah. Um, and we just try and do that as much as we can. That's fantastic. So yeah, I think the- And schools school. need so much help. I mean, 100%. the resources are pretty strapped in the schools. Yeah, and when you getting hear worse that and worse each year. When you hear that they're closed, you know, shutting down something in the yeah. school mm -hmm. because they just didn't have the funding for yeah. it. You know, you know, there's, there's kids that wanted to do that. So yep. to try to- Right. You know, do that. So we try to, yeah, support the yeah. fundraisers. I can't, Good. you know, a lot of times the kids will come in with the, uh, you know, you get the little coupon books or something mm -hmm. like that. So, so, so I'll be like, I'll take 10. <laughs> and they're like, what? Like, yep. I'll just, I could just give you the $250 to help donate. Yeah. This. I'll take, and then I pass them out to yeah. other, to yeah. other yeah. people. So of course. Um, it's just a way, we, you know, we get our name on their shirts and stuff like that. We've, you know, mm -hmm. so different stuff like that is, is always good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's one of them. Good. So you do stuff in the schools. Yeah. Um, the other one that, we, that I'm a part of that he yeah. is kind enough to fund for me. Well, the, <laughs> um, that's, is, that's good too. Yeah. Is the 100 Women Who Care. Lovely. Um, Wonderful. So I'm a part of that organization, yeah. which is awesome. So we meet four times a year mm -hmm. and we get together, have three different charities come in and yeah. present to the group. Um, and then we vote on which charity gets yeah. the $10,000 check and the other two charities that are there, they split the remainder of the yeah. contributed donations, which typically ends up being at least $1,000 yeah. per organization. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's more than that, but it's usually at least that. Um, and that's been absolutely awesome. It's been a great way to learn that's about terrific. some different charities that are around and different organizations. Yeah, I know, like Marguerite's around. Place has been a big Marguerite's recipient place. there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so that's been really cool and really educational for mm -hmm. for me and for our business to hear about these different. And also, there are a lot of really really great women in that group. I know a oh, lot yeah. of them, and yeah. a lot of very strong women. Honestly, it's a very well connected <laughs> group. So I think yeah. that's right. exciting for you to be part right. of that. Yeah, that's and th for sure. that was a big thing for me. I I have. You know, my dad had all the people that he knew, mm -hmm. and then I created my relationships and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it was one of those things that, you know, for mm -hmm. Brooke to create her own, you mm -hmm. know, and obviously that's not a group that I was part of. W right. No. I do care, but I'm not a hundred <laughs> women who care. <laughs> so, so it was a great, a great way for her to get involved with mm -hmm. something yeah. and establish those relationships. Um, yeah, on yeah fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's been really cool. There's some really incredible people that are a part of that organization. So definitely yeah. have. Yeah. Very good. I'm very yeah. happy and we it. try to do stuff for the National Children's Home. We work mm -hmm. on their vehicles and, and give them discounts and oh, yeah. you know, try to 
you know, try to help them out. Also grow natural. Grow natural, we, yeah, sure. We try, we try to help them out. I was doing stuff for um, rotaries. We try mm -hmm. to help with different stuff from mm -hmm. that. We, we help them on Merrimack. And so there's, the, you know, always try to, if, if somebody comes to me with a community need, mm -hmm. you know, we really try to, to help with yeah. that. Not, not that bigger organizations don't need the help, but for, right. for us, we just feel like, you know, we get our business from mm -hmm. the community. Right. I, so, I agree. I mean, I, you're, so you're, you know, your employees work here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your customers live here. Yes. Mm -hmm. You live here. I yes. mean, I agree with that. I so. mean, and I feel personally the same way. I mean, there are right. organizations that we support, my wife and I support, that right. maybe aren't in our community, sure. but, but our passion is really right. our yeah. friends and neighbors and yeah. those around us. Right. Absolutely. So, so. Absolutely. That's good. Um, so what is next for Merrimack Auto Center? Oof. Where's what the next? I'm not gonna even ask. Where's the next location? Oh. I'm not gonna ask. That. Three three locations would be would you know it would be amazing, um, but it, right now it's it you know we're we're very blessed we're very fortunate. Yeah. I have ten mechanics, uh, which is yeah. a lot of mechanics for two shops. We you know mm -hmm. we stay busy. We keep them all busy, um, but it's definitely this mm -hmm. is is finding finding help and getting staff yeah, and you know setting up a whole team um, and, and continuing to give that service. So. Definitely, I think two is is where we're going to stay mm -hmm. um, for sure. It's just a matter, you know, to trying to stay up with, as we talked about at the beginning, the, the changing of of the vehicles mm -hmm. and yeah. keeping keeping my guys going to school to learn, you know, about these changes so that we're not, you know, not left behind in all that. So, have, have you been affected by a lot of these sort of global supply chain kind of issues, getting parts, getting? You know, components, yeah. that kind of for, thing? Uh, for a little while. Tires. It's, it's, it's tires, getting, it's been bad. Tires, yeah. yes. Bad. I, I, I may have had yeah. this conversation with you. I know I've had it at one well, point. Well, that's because my car only has, like, stupid tires. Like, right. Like oh, one it's model not of, the only one. Yeah. But the, the, the company that we buy our tires from have, uh, they have 27 warehouses, and I don't know the exact amount, maybe $200 million worth of tires or more. At one point, they had more tires on boats in the water than they did in all 27 of their warehouses combined, wow. that they could not offload vehicles. Oh, so, this is back when, L off, when off the port the of LA was. Yeah. Yes, so mm -hmm. the fact was mm -hmm. they were, you know, say they had all this money tied up in tires right. Right. that they couldn't sell because they could not offload them. Yeah. That has that that's has gotten much better. Yeah, it's gotten a lot better. Uh, brake yeah. rotors had a big issue. They went up on price on those a mm -hmm. lot, couldn't buy mm -hmm. them right. So it, it's getting better. There still are some supply chain issues, mm -hmm. but not not like it was. Not right. like it was. So. How about um, cost pressures? Definitely has gone up. Mm. You know, every everything has gone up. You know, as we try to stay competitive with you know the oil change prices and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, so you know you have a price that you set for an oil change, say you know forty dollars. You know, but the the oil went up forty cents a, a quart. The oil filters went up a mm. dollar. You, 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 had to, you have to pay your employees another dollar an hour. So mm. next thing you know, that $40 oil change that you really weren't making much money on to begin with, you're making even less money on. And yep. you have to make a choice. Do I go up on my oil change or do I keep it the same and yeah. try to stay competitive? So you, tr mm -hmm. you try to find that happy medium um, yep. type of thing where you're, you're giving a, you know. Well, how do you know what your competition is doing? Because um, pricing is a, tra a tricky thing in a small sure, business. Sure, sure. Right? I mean, one, I'm friends with a lot of other business owners mm -hmm. uh, in in the automotive industry. Okay. So we we talk. Yeah. You know, we talk. Not mm -hmm. like we we try to con you know do a conspiracy together and say let's yeah, all go up. It's, it's, it's obviously you know? a community. Like, but it's a, yeah. it's a it's a community. The shop owners in Merrimack, Nashua, and, it's a yeah. community. Sure, hundred percent. So we kind of all talk about it, and and we talk to the parts companies because they yeah. know they have a salesman mm -hmm. that goes around, and you know, okay. so we kind of ask them, where's everybody at? Are they going up? And so you kind of, from what you're hearing out there, mm -hmm. or customers that come in that, you know, yeah. if they walk yeah. in the door and are like, wow, you're so much less than everybody else, mm. or vice versa. Oh my goodness, I got a price of this, yeah. and you're so much more. Kind of yeah. like, all right, let's, let's. So you're hearing it from your customers, you hear, that makes you know, sense. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you kind of just check that out and see. So, yep, hmm. ab absolutely. We, you just, you don't want to be the most expensive. You don't want to be the, the least expensive. You well, you're not selling your product and no service it's a service really industry and, and standing behind your product mm. and that's what i tell people too we've been here for you know 50 years this this business has been around 
Um, we're going to hopefully be around for another 250. No, we won't say that. One. <laughs> but we're, you know, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. For so, your great, great, yeah, great, right. great, great, great. Right. So, yeah. so we stand behind our product, um, and that's yeah. the biggest thing. Is you know, customers leave leave satisfied knowing that if there's an issue, we're going to stand behind it. What would you summarize your business philosophy as? Do you have? I mean, if you had a mission statement, like every nonprofit, you ask them what their mission is. Right, right. They're going to tell you what their mission statement is. Right. If you had such a thing, what would I'll you let, summarize um, it as? I have kind of one, but I'll let. I mean, the like the like the basic line that I always use is that we are three generations, and we've been treating you like family since 1977. We want everybody to come in our doors and feel like they have been treated fairly and respectfully and that they received a top quality, fair product and service. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's really it for me, family and quality. Yeah, I mean, I would say, if I was gonna say, well, when I send somebody over to Brooke and Chad, I'm gonna say, you're gonna get honesty. You might yeah. not love what you hear, but you're that's gonna fair. get honesty. That's fair. They're gonna care about your safety. This Absolutely. is why I send my family to right. you, because mm -hmm. I know you're gonna tell my stupid daughter that she needs to fix her car, <laughs> and she'll listen to you, that's and she right. won't listen to me. She'll right. listen to you, though. Right, right. So, yeah. isn't, that, isn't that the way, though? My wife yeah. says that all the time. Someone could tell me something, I'm like, uh-huh, and then somebody else tells it, I'm like, oh, okay. And she's like, yeah. I, just, I just said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's always you're a hired so, gun, yeah. man. You're a so, consultant. Yeah. yeah, so yes, we we do get that from customers, mm. uh, that that yeah. type of stuff. So, but excellent. Yeah, but honesty, Hon honesty. You know, work. Uh, just yeah, being that's honest fantastic. Is, is huge. So, well, guys, I told you it was going to go by fast, and we are out of time. But I do have a gift for you, <laughs> and. Um, of course, and this is the, the colors are not meant to imply gender. However, <laughs> that's okay. however, that's yours, Chad, and Thank it's black, dark navy yep. blue. Yep. Yep. This Works. is a girl hat, Brooke. I love it. It's got like a thing oh. for a, a ponytail. Thing. That's actually fabulous. Isn't that amazing, I love right? That. I know you have long hair. Yeah, and I'm guessing you wear a ponytail perfect. from time to time. <laughs> Thank you. So thank Much you. Much appreciated. And, you're right. and you're uh, you know, guys, we're just so appreciative for I the support you. and the partnership. Every way you should give back, like you said, giving back to schools. You know, partnering with United Way, getting involved with the 100 Women Who Care. These are all great Absolutely. ways to partner. And, uh, yeah. you know, maybe it will be another 150 years. That would be pretty, pretty that would be awesome. terrific. But we love partnering yeah. with you. You yeah. make it uh, e easy to, to give to the United Way. With oh, well, you thank are. you. So we appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, so, uh, so thanks. So you've been listening to another um, episode of the United Way show, Living United in with Nashua Business. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, listening to our friends from Merrimack Auto Center. We'll be back in a couple weeks with another episode. Thank you very much.